So yesterday I had a video and I told y'all that I was going to name this series The Ant That Can't. And I got a lot of pushback on the name because people were in my YouTube comment section telling me that ants were very industrious. They were hard workers and don't don't link up these homosexuals with ants. OK, I will not. I have renamed it the pests that want to nest and rest. Hopefully that eliminates the, um, you know, coming for me about these ants. I won't do it. Ants are hardworking. These other pests that want to nest and rest are attempting to leech off of women with resources. So this is called <laughs> the pest that want to nest. And rest. Some of the comments, I feel sorry for the ants being related to these dusties. Ants actually work hard, protect and provide for their loved ones, especially the queen or mother ant. So this is going to be an ongoing series. I put out a comment saying, tell me your stories. And I got so many stories. So this video is going to be talking about some of those stories. I do want to remind us all, I have a book out called Ashy Men Will Make You Fat, a petty self-help book. It includes talking about these homosexuals, or now what I'm talking about is these um, the pests that want to nest in. In our book, we have a dustinary. This is a petty glossary with many of the terms that I use on a consistent basis. I was made aware that everybody doesn't know what a homosexual is or what homosexuality is. A homosexual is a person that enters into a relationship to prevent themselves from being um, homeless. And homosexuality is the attraction of a human based on a human having a home, food, and Wi-Fi. So I'm just telling y'all that just so we're all on the same page about what homosexuality is. Now let's get into some of these comments. And like I said, this is a um, this is going to be a series, so I'm not going to get to all of the commentary. Um, this person in my comment section says that this pretty much um, describes spoken word poets, rappers. Um, they they try to woo women at their shows and their performances. So their words and that that beat that's enough to get into women's homes. OK, so this story time, my former best friend and mom had both taken up with homosexuals and bonded over how well their relationships were going, all the while throwing shade and um, throwing shade and pity towards me. Mom never really knew who she was after I moved out on my own and several close family members died. So she was vulnerable to the dust. I tried to talk some sense into her, but nope. Former BFF was just a desperate white woman who chose bottom feeder black men because she, um, she knew they would look at her like she was a goddess incarnate. Long story short, both rubble bucket dust bandits cheated on them. BFFs do sired a baby outside of their union that she basically raised. And my mom had in stage COPD. I moved in to care for her and reluctantly him, but he only came home two times per week as he stayed at his side pieces spot. When mom passed, I called to tell him he had 48 hours to get his stuff. Former BFF broke up with Dust Bucket after 13 years. Don't do it. 13 years she was with a rubble bucket dust bunny, dust bandit. I apologize. Can you imagine and took care of somebody else's child? OK, former BFF's dude was a recently released ex-con who worked at her job as a janitor or porter. He bounced from his mom's house to whatever woman he could shack up with. He had a girlfriend at the time that he cheated on with my friend. Additional messiness. We all lived in the same apartment building. This this part is crazy. Mom's was a case of mistaken identity. She thought her Dusty was his brother who, unbeknownst to her, had unalived himself to two years prior. This story is very dusty. If you have bronchitis or emphysema or asthma, please scroll away. She says, my BFF had a child with what is known as a homosexual. They met in high school, but the signs were very clear into adulthood. He moved to anyone's place that would have him that also didn't know his habits. His mom kicked him out for not paying rent, and he blew all his money on weed. He leached on his dad's place. When his dad went to the hospital for a few months, he pulled up a chair and made himself a cop in the hospital room next to his dad because he didn't pay the rent or keep the lights on. 
No surprise when the dad was discharged, he was furious to find he'd been evicted. The son lied about paying the rent. Father moved back in with the ex-wife and the son couch surfed into a new girlfriend's house while still avoiding paying child support. One of my college roomies had a homosexual move in with us one or two days a week. He lived on the beach because he didn't want to live with his grandparents because they did. They had too many rules and lived far from the beach. She was always feeding him and giving him rides to the beach for his drum circle. And this person said like a stray cat, exactly like a stray cat. This is the last one that I'm going to share for the day. My cousin is pushing 50 and and has been couch surfing and living with girlfriends for a long time. One time while he was staying with his aunt, he had a girl over but was trying to be sneaky with it. His aunt doesn't like her bedroom door to be closed, but he tried to close it anyway because he was trying to get his thing. mm, Yes, he was trying to get his thing thing worked on. The girl, thank goodness, ended up leaving. But I was like, wow, the audacity to bring a woman to a home you don't even own and then try to have intercourse with her. Peak homosexual. All right. So this woman says back in the days when I dated online, I immediately deleted any matches who would ask me if I lived alone. Sir, you're either going to try to stalk me or expedite the dating process to visit me and never leave. Get somebody else to do it. Okay, so remember, we had a discussion about what these dudes do and how they um, give the game to other homosexuals and how they try to nest and rest in your home. First, they target women that have a home. So like this person said, don't even talk to people that ask if you live alone. Don't tell people you live alone. Make up a roommate that you live with, your cousin, your mama. You're helping your mama. Make up something. Do not tell these people that you live alone. Don't tell these people. Do not tell people your work schedule. Don't be consistently available to these people so they start to understand when you're at work or not at work. Don't move too quickly. Don't let these people come to your home. Don't let them leave a toothbrush. Especially do not let them start getting mail. If you get any mail to your home, you need to immediately say return to sender because once these people give the game to each other, they know that if they establish residency with mail, that it is harder to get them out of your home. They know the residency laws. They don't know that they, they won't do stuff like better themselves. They know how to leech off of people and then they teach the game to other Um, pests that want to nest and rest. So you guys keep on following this series. I have so much material. So I could probably do one of these series every single day. So tune in, tune in y'all. Like, comment, share. Share your stories. We'll keep this going because we do not want the next generation of women to be stuck with these types. Y'all have a good